Welcome to the Spin Whiz Comic Show Whoa. from Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us for exclusive interviews with the publishers, bringing you the newest titles in indie comics, web comics, movies, and more. No way, way. And now here's your host, Jeff Palumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew from Intense Jet. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Hey, thank you, Brad. Jose and I were talking it up. There were questions all over the place. It was crazy, but great seeing all of three of you. Let's get right into it. Before I introduce you, or before you introduce yourselves, where we met at Oak City, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was Oak City Comic. Uh, uh, so in Raleigh, there's two. There's one in Raleigh called Oak City, and there's one in Durham called NC Comic Con, and they both are basically six months apart. Is basically what it is. And I found these guys. And I, I remember specifically where it was. It was the end of the aisle on the right hand side, right near the right near the main middle. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. All the stuff, and all three of them are sitting together, and I'm like, well, which. Which one of you is the artist? Which one's you the writer? Which one are you? Do? And they're like, no, we 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 all do our own thing too. I'm like, what? You've got to be <laughs> kidding me! I'm like, I've got to have you guys on the site. And then that's I mean, really, within two weeks, you guys were up yeah. uh, and doing it. So I'm gonna shut up because nobody wants to hear from me anymore. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, and then let's get into the content that you guys have. I'm gonna drop the link so that while people are listening, they can try to kind of peruse. Um, your content. Remember, uh, if you want to get this content, they, there's ads around the, the page you, so you can read them for free. But if you want to support these guys, 70% of all the PDF sales goes right back to them, so you can hit them up. But let's start chatting. Give me one second. I'm going to drop this in. Go ahead, guys. Introduce yourselves. What are we, what are we all about? Um, and then we will. I will start the riveting questionnaire. Gotcha. Oh, cool. I, uh, we're a group called Intense GT. And um, I'm Elijah Simon, and I'm Jerome Smith. I'm Travis Smith. And um, yeah, like, like uh, we're all family and stuff like that. Like, these two are my cousins, so like, we always just kind of draw and do, do our thing, you know. Yeah. So we. we I, I say it wrong. Do I? I when I I I said intense jet. It actually is J E T. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm the asshole. No. All right. No, I yeah. got it. That's fine. Sitting in order, you know. Yeah, it's like J E T. Oh, so you all got some branding going on too. <laughs> yeah. oh, all right, fantastic. See, you guys got it taken care of, and you got the thing behind you too. Yeah. Like, you oh. Man, you guys come prepped. I forgot that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. So, let's talk about first the content you guys have because on our site you have four titles up already. There's two more that were supposed to be loaded that for some odd reason or not, and my, unfortunately my partner is in China right now, so I sent him a note and we will check on why those are not loaded up. They should be, they, I already submitted them. It might've been that the server caught, so we'll get those up in the next week. Um, but let's talk about each one of your content. What do you guys do sing individually? What do you do as a group? And then kind of what's coming out? And then there might be questions coming in from uh, everybody on the stream as well. So if I interrupt or, in between, instead of me asking questions, I'll let them kind of pull through. So go ahead. Whoever wants to start, hit me. Um, yeah, sure. Just start with the group, group mm -hmm. project. Um, okay. Our group project that we've done, that was actually uh, our first book that we published back in, what year was it? That was 2017. 2017. Yeah. And um, that's Untold Dreams. Uh, okay. It's a sci-fi adventure, action adventure. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't even know how we started. How we start that actual story like I'm not sure how we well that that story comes is I don't know it kind of came naturally because we all been drawn together for years obviously with we family but um uh you know he, Elijah had a character drawn on uh paint on his computer like back in 2007 I want to say 2008, 2008. 2008 and uh me and my brother Travis we came in and we saw and we were like you know let's just draw some characters to match and we did it after that we were kind of like yeah let's throw a story together and then untold dreams kind of formed itself almost and uh you know and, and yeah, we wanted to try to like do something kind of different from all of our regular stuff so we kind of like took it like out of space to like a whole different planet and 
just kind of trying to be different. That's what we call ourselves trying to do, be slightly different. So, is it part of the individual series that you all write though and produce? Like, is it is it the same universe or is it just completely different? It's completely different. Okay, yeah. So there there is no crossover happening in this world. Not in this one. Not in this one. No. Okay. So let's talk. So we untold. Uh, let me. I'm actually gonna link it while I'm talking about it. I want to make sure that we actually do it. So Untold Dreams was the first one we actually dropped on our homepage. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna drop it in chat right now. So guys, if you want to have a really good one, that's the one they all worked on together. It's in chat. Remember, for those of you that are actually checking into the podcast with Intense Jet. Um, this will all be in the text, so all these links will be here. So you don't have to worry about going to try to spinwizcomics.com and trying to find them. Just go through the transcription. The links will be right there. Make sure you check these guys out. So, um, Bakos is actually jumping in and saying, are we on old to Untold Dreams? He wants to know more about Solid because he loves the Solid comic. Nice. Oh, nice. 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 So let's go into a little bit about one uh, what untold dreams is about and then let's go into more of the individuals because i think there's a lot of story there i was um i don't know if you guys could hear me before but i honestly think you guys are some of the younger artists and writers of this upcoming comic generation and i think the the raw talent you guys have is by far ridiculous compared to a lot of other people that i've seen um, I think certain people have hit a wall and they're like, oh, well, Marvel and DC do this, so I'm going to. And I think you're like, yeah, we like comics, but we love stories. And that's what we're going to do. And the art is completely different than yeah. anything I've ever seen. It, to me, it almost looks like watercolor. And yeah. it's just, it's awesome. the way. It, anyway, I'll, again, being a fan, I'm going to shut up. Elijah's in the middle, Bako. So, um... Elijah, if you want to wave real quick, just so Bako Bako. There you go. There's Elijah. Yeah. Oh, and they're showcasing him, too. There you go. Um, Jose just said I'm sold. Jose's in already. So um, if you do, if you guys have, after this in the next couple of days, if you want me to set up um, just a Facebook chat so you guys can meet Jose and Alan, I'd be more than happy to do that. Because um, C3 has got their stuff going. But anyway, I, 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 I digress from what I've been asking you to do. So tell me a little bit more about Untold Dreams and then let's go into some of the other titles you guys are working on individually. Alright. Um, Untold Dreams is like, basically we wanted to kind of uh, create a story with like three main protagonists. So like, no one overshadows anyone. It's just three characters that are like teaming up, but you have to like dive into their backgrounds and figure out kind of what makes them who they are and why do they, you know, why do they do the things they do? So they basically work for a corporation called Shadow and um, they pretty much have to like defend their planet. And um, to me specifically, my character, he's from an area where everyone is high on technology and like um, he has like like he has like a robot eye that like shoots out lasers and stuff yeah, like that. I mean, why not? <laughs> <laughs> like that's for kind of like that's how how advanced the technology is over in that region. And then like for his character, uh, my character is Reeve, and uh, he's from a different region where everyone has super strength. Yeah. And I have it like divided into three regions. Then you have a main core region where um, you have all three different. Uh, Ukrainians, different types of Ukrainians, they're all together operating in that one main region. So in the region that my guy is from, uh, his name is Reeve, this is him here at the bottom. All right, bottom. I'm in charge of this character here, and I draw him as well. Uh, he logs it for him, for his character Nexus, and this guy here is my brother Travis, Kalen. But uh, Reeve is from a region where they all have strength, but uh, my character and his backstory, he somehow gets some sort of technology attached to his arm and it allows it to transform. But you would have to dive uh, deeper into that background story, which we'll eventually get into once we start releasing the other phases. Okay. Yeah, my character, um, his region, they're more about speed. They're they're very fast and, and their speed can pretty much they can use it with it's, it's not more just it's not just running. <laughs> Excuse me. It's not just running. It's they, they do a lot of things with it, you know. Um, but uh, 
my character is more of a he, he's the joke star, I guess you could say, of, of the group. You know, they all all three of them have three different personalities. And um, going back to what he said about Ukrainians, the planet is called Yukon, and um, yeah, they're 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 Ukrainians, and yeah, the regions, yeah, the different abilities and stuff like that. And the first issue, um, it's kind of an introduction to the characters. You know, um, we're definitely diving into the story more deep. You know, especially like you no, know, the second issue that comes out. Mm-hmm. Like we wanted to like uh, kind of do like more of an introduction to the characters and like pretty much like we're, we were showing our abilities and stuff like that. And it also kind of served as like a test project because we were like new to comic books and oh, yeah. as far as like getting them printed and getting them made and stuff like that. So this was like a a, a great way for us to do a test project, but um. When we team back up, you know, we're gonna like go deeper into the story and oh, yeah, really really figure out what those like it's gonna sound cheesy, but what those untold dreams really are that they're having, you know. Oh yeah. That sound cheesy, that sounds why you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's the whole title. The the, reason for the title. Yeah, the title Untold Dreams is basically because you got your main three protagonists and each of them have an untold goal that they wanna reach. But they all work for a corporation called Shadow, so they're kinda of paired together. These three guys who were forced to kind of work together, but they have no idea about like the background. their backgrounds and their untold goals and stuff like that. So we call them, you know, we call it untold dreams for that specific reason. I love it. So one of the questions coming out of Baco is, he has, I have phase zero. Are there plans for phase one, phase two, etc.? Oh, oh yeah, plans for like phase twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if people love it, we're 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 trying to go all out. We're we're going yeah. phase one hundred if we can. I love it. There you and go, like, Baco. We're super new to like um, doing conditions and everything like that, oh, yeah. so it's like we just started. Like we we just got started with like printing books. So phase one was like a, I mean phase zero was like an introduction. But when we actually dive into one and two and three, it's gonna be more of a deeper core story for you know for everyone to follow. Mm-hmm. And it's just gonna be a lot. I love a lot, it. So lot yeah. because each of you has their own character. Do you write together, or do you kind of say, "Hey, um, this is what my character is doing"? You have to react to it and, and write, almost like you're actually playing out these three characters in a play. Or do you actually get together and say, "I want him to do this. I'm going to do this." Like, how do you? Because I have never heard of a book that has three separate writers, let alone three separate artists. So yeah. how do you make all that come together? Because it sounds like a drastic feat on it. Not not a bad one, but just like a crazy amount of potential effort to get even one book out. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it goes back to um, us growing up, drawing together. It, it makes it a lot easier for us to, um, I guess, uh I guess the things that we think of, you know, the things that we want to create, it, it, it kind of connect. It, it's kind of similar because of the things we're interested in and stuff like that. So, you know, at, with the with a group project, we we get together and we'll we'll you know we'll all sit down and we'll talk about you know what's going to be next for the next issue. Um, but when it comes down to our individual characters, we'll we'll tell each other like, okay, this is what this, my character is going to bring to the table on this issue, and then you know we'll make everything connect. So you have a goal of where you want the arc of that issue to go. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah that's... And then how you get there is kind of the fun back and forth. And I can't even imagine having probably grown up together, being in the same family, not only are there, like, it must be super fun, almost like playing D&D together, but writing your own story. <laughs> but, I bet, but I bet you sometimes you're like, I, I don't want to even talk to your face right now. Like, you have you, just, mm-mm. I mean, does that happen? Because you have that family structure that a lot of people also don't. You know, sometimes families are a little more, let's say, open than business colleagues. Um, does that happen in the creation process? Like, it, it happens, but it's like, I feel like at this level, we've matured and we have so much experience working together so long before social media or anything. Mm-hmm. that it's like, if we get mad at each other, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to deal with this guy for like, an hour or two, but then we're like right back to yeah. hanging out. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, we used to put hands a lot when we were when we were younger. You know, well, um, yeah, because we. I mean, when you're when you're younger, you know, everybody has this whole mindset of uh, you know, oh man, like my idea is so up here, 
yeah. you're right yeah. there, so over here, blah, blah, but it's like, you know, being that, like, you know, because we're blood related and stuff, we had the opportunity to work with each other for years. It, it's kind of it's easier to you know fizzle out all the you know the, the noise and drama yeah. and stuff like that and kind of just get back to uh you know the whole reason why we're in love with drawing in the first place exactly. right yeah and you kind of have a little bit bigger of a bond right like uh, you have that good trust bond that business partners normally don't have you kind of got a family because you're going to see each other at the next reunion yeah and you know <laughs> there's no getting away from that Definitely, man. And it's like beyond that, like we we see each other every day, like yeah, you know, we do. Each other mm-hmm. all, all the time. time. Oh, we game together, we play <laughs> video games together, all everything, everything. Do you? Oh, so you game as well? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to. I don't mean to kind of go on the side of this, but what games are you playing right now? We'll get back to comics in a second. But being a gamer <laughs> myself, I'd like to know what what are y'all playing right now? Uh, Tekken Seven. That's oh. our. We, Tech, we, we, we just did tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Tekken Seven is one of the ones that we we're, we're probably gonna never stop playing Tekken. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just forever. I just did my second playthrough of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, right now I'm trying to get a platinum trophy in uh, God of War. To yes. remake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love the Uncharted series. I, I love it. Yeah, uh, Uncharted is sick. Uncharted. Uh, we're all playing Anthem, Anthem too. Anthem. We're all playing Anthem together. You still play. You might be the only three guys still playing Anthem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just and that's started. another. That's another thing. Like with all the artwork and stuff, we 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 get on games late. Like when it comes out, we don't we don't actually get it because we're, we're drawing and stuff. Yeah. So we're like, hey, we got a little time. Let's go ahead, like recon, like uh, Ghost Recon. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So while everybody's jumping off of these games, we're just now getting jumping on. on. Yeah. So we like. We came after like all the patches and updates. And we're yeah. like, hey, let's play that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can play it clean, and it's like forty percent yeah. off too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's another right. good thing. So that has um, that has definitely Tekken Seven just boosted. If you're if you have chat up, you just you just started a fire in our chat. Um, so <laughs> you know, they're like Tekken Seven. Are you kidding me? Like, who do y'all use? Is the big one. So they want to know who you use, and can we hold a spin with? Tournament in Tekken Seven. Hey, yeah, I'm down. Hey, I'm down. Yeah, I want to. I'm you know, down. Well, you know, we, we rock with the Machine of Blood. Oh uh, no. Kazia, Kazia, Jin, Machine Lars. I play with Jin. Yeah, I play with Lars. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, there's your answer to that, there, uh, Angel. <laughs> the best of luck. Um, I haven't played a Tekken since it was like, since I was maybe 16, and it was the like the first stand-up version. Man. Oh man. I'm Ooh. old. I'm old. I'm old. I still look good, but I'm old. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, then Mishima's, huh? Uh, he said, okay, y'all wave dash or no? We don't need that. We don't need that. He says, no. <laughs> and Angel says he's a re- he's OG Tekken as well. So that's, that's <laughs> it. Original gamer, baby. That's, that's the way I call it. <laughs> uh, Tekken one, so. Bam, good to see you here, buddy. Um, he says, I will take them all on with uh, Kayuza Mishima, and I... And he, then he says, I will lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> see, I knew that would do something. So, we got a question up top. I still want to get to the other titles. So, Untold Dreams, I think we got that. Bako did want to know real quick if you could hold the hold it up again and say who the character is and which one of you writes them. If you could do that one more time. Bako, this is for you. All right. Um, okay. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly, but uh, this guy here that my finger is over. Mm-hmm. A little closer? Okay. Yep. This guy that my finger is over. That's my character, Reeve. Okay. I did him. I did that guy right there, Nexus. Yep. Yeah, that's me right there, Caleb. So it's really how you're sitting right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on our shirt, too. Yeah, it's on the shirt. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Oh, you're clipping. It might be because I have. The, let me uh, r- let me bring them down a little bit. The audio is probably clipping because I had them in the red. That's my fault. Oh. No, that was that was me. That was just I'm, I'm adjusting all the levels. Um, okay, so that's up. Um, Jose has a question for you. Let me find it real quick. How do you sell, settle disagreements when one or two of you don't feel the feel the direction of a particular storyline? And then who has the tiebreaker? Because there's three of you. I'm going to say this like a joking way. Uh, Stranger Things, if you guys have watched the latest Stranger Things, 
And uh, Hopper, well, no, no, season two, Hopper is talking to Eleven, and he's like halfway happy. Compromise. <laughs> compromise. We got to compromise. Yeah. I mean, we that's... all um, kind of pitch ideas together, and then if we're not feeling one like too heavily, we all kind of like uh, take pieces from that one person's idea if we're not feeling it too much. We kind of like take pieces from that and add it to the other two's uh, uh, idea that they that they have going. Yeah, and, it, and it's all about having honesty too. Like if I come at these guys and I got a new idea but it's not that good, they're going to be honest with me and let me know up front. They're not going to let it drag on and then let me know yeah. way later down the line that, hey, that's a bad idea. Yeah, story, story arc later and you're like, you could have told me when we started it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it. That I mean, that's that's tough. Dealing with uh, Jose says that's awesome. He said nice with multiple exclamation marks, which I upgraded to awesome. Um, nice. And I think that's tough. It's it's hard enough for one person to really get along with even an artist sometimes, let alone three writers with three art, three sort of same art styles. I mean, I think you all have your own specific style, but they all blend. Oh, yeah. um, and but different ideas as to how you want something to go, how you want it to go, where you want it to go, which I think is great. So, and I think that brings us to our next point. You have your own individual titles also. So why don't we talk about those a little bit? Gotcha. We're going to start off with Solid since um, yeah, somebody's, oh, wait, yeah. somebody's waiting oh, yeah, patiently yeah, yeah, yeah. for Solid. Oh, yeah. Um, Solid is, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It, it. it was my first ever solo project. Okay. So, like, um... I wanted to just do something completely different from anything I've ever done. Like, you know. <laughs> That's solid, yeah. She's, um, she's a princess who went rogue, and um, she's on a quest to hunt down the sword that that killed her mother. So, like, um, you know, it's, just a, it's, it's like a thrill ride. I wanted to write more of a, I wanted to add more suspense in the story when I was writing it. So it's like a roller coaster of events happening leading up to her trying to solve a mystery pretty much. So um right now I kinda got it on break. I'm working on something else right now. But I do have plans to bring it back. Um really soon. Really soon. Please please do because any girl that's that badass with a big ass sword. <laughs> and that that's uh that's hot right there. Uh, hey. Bake, uh, Bake Obako said, uh, I have all of those comics. Oh, nice. 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 Wait, what? Bako? Yeah, Bake Obako. He's, he's Bake one Obako. of, uh, he's my moderator right now, but he's actually, uh, we're, we're part of a, uh, a gaming, like, we watch other people on Twitch. Uh, mm -hmm. We became friends when I was actually, long story short, when I was the engagement manager, uh, strategic engagement manager for Lenovo's gaming division. I met somebody called a streamer called Potato plus other ones, and he had a friend called Loyal Patriot. Loyal Patriot, myself, and Potato all became friends outside of gaming, um, and uh, Loyal Patriot has Nerd Nation, and Potato has Dato Farm, and a lot of these guys overlap. So a lot of the people that come in to watch me and have supported me and Spinwiz Comics, and now you guys are actually part of one of those communities. And right, oh. and Baco is actually more more part of Nerd Nation. Same with Bam and Chat and those guys. They're all kind of part of Nerd Nation. So we're all nerdy, regardless. Um, and all gamers and stuff like that. So it just happens that we overlap. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yep. Jose, all their work is available. All their work up to now, if I'm not mistaken, is available on Spinners. We have so Electric Tiger is up. You can find that now. Because I know oh, we, yeah. had that, we, we had that discussion. Electric Tiger, past. Shadow Wolf, that's the other one that we got up. Solid and Untold Dreams. So right now we're talking about Solid. Elijah, you want to say anything else about Solid? Oh, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, she's a witch now, you know. She's a witch, so Second issue. when it, when it yeah. comes back, it's going to be slightly different, but still the same. It's going to be cool. A, long, a little more character development. Yeah. And going that route, okay. okay. Deeper, yeah. I'm trying to dive a little deeper. You have to. I get it. Yeah. Um. So what else we got? So what? Well, who wants to talk next about whatever? Um. Travis. Travis. Oh. Yeah. My my solo is uh Shadow Wolf. Yep. 
That's uh actually there, you go. there we go. There it oh, is. Look at that. They come prepared, I'm telling you. you got it. Alan, you have got to talk to these guys later. They come more prepped than some of the people I've seen at cons. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, sorry, go ahead. Shadow Wolf is a this is a superhero film based comic. Um well in our in in my universe, I, they're not called superheroes. Um called hypers. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually my first ever character I've ever drawn. Uh, I was about eleven years old. Oh wow. But um you know, of course, you know, as you get older, you develop, you know, you change your character look and all that. And um, it's it's about a, a young fighter, second issue coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about a um, young fighter named uh, Wesley Crane. He lives in uh, Darklit City. And that's it's kind of a corrupted city. And uh, he's actually a fighter, an MMA fighter, I guess you could say. And uh, he ends up getting injured. And... He gets into this, this depressed state. Get the hook. Mike Flipper. Um, I thought that was on my side. I'm like, damn, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I don't know what was that. But um, he, uh, yeah, he gets injured. He pretty much gets into depressed state. And um, someone, I don't, I'm not, not going to say who, but he comes up to him with an offer to change his life. And he ends up gaining, you know, some some new things in his life, you know. And it, and it, 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 cha it changes him. And it, it and, a bigger threat, a big threat comes to the city, and um, I guess when that threat comes, he decides to be a hero in the city. And uh, the first issue is the origin. It's pretty much this. It's, it's, it's showing pretty much the beginning of how he gets his abilities. Okay. And, yeah. And what is the offset group? So you have the hypers, and then there's another group that they're trying to basically battle. They do battle them. They win. And then they get basically kicked underground by the humans, right? Okay, yeah, that yeah. one. I, you want to talk about? You it? might as well talk about it. Okay, because yes. uh, electric uh, Maso Electric Tiger actually ties in with uh, Shadow Wolf, so they they got they have the same lore. But uh, yeah, uh, the hypers back in, in 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 the day they were amongst the humans. The hypers, mm -hmm. but then you had those who kind of went south and you know went bad, and, and you, we call those uh, psychos. So psychos, uh, that was it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the psychos, you know, they try to take over. They try to, you know, um, uh, cause chaos around the world and stuff like that. And you know, they terrorize humanity. So uh, that's when the good guys that have abilities, which are the hypers, they, you know, take action and try to defend humanity. But you know, humanity isn't as forgiven as they thought they would be. So humanity tries to run them out, basically, and and kind of, uh, you know, uh, initiated martial law, kind of. You know, try to cage them up, kill them off, and kind of force them into hiding. It, you know, it, it's not really a uh, situation where it's like, oh, you know, they, um, you know, they're they're uh, banned or anything like that. This is more of one of those. Uh, they kind of got forced into hiding. So, mm -hmm. so you know, you don't really see any other hyper stuff like that until you, yeah, know, you read until, issue on the Shadow Wolf. Yeah, and it's kind of like a, I guess you could say an eye opener for certain hypers i guess and um uh second issue i'm working on now is, is about 70 percent done i would say okay all right so um there's a whole bunch of questions coming in do you want to pause real quick so i can so we can ask some of these questions and then we'll yeah. go on to jerome yeah okay so first question is why did they choose to release five different number ones instead of doing five issues of one series good question that's, that's, a, that's good a good question. question very good question. Um, <coughs> yeah. well our first book was until dreams we did that one as a group first and then um the second book was solid and the follow-up to solid so those are like those two are connected because it's the first solid and then it's followed by the continuation and then um these two, you know, because like that was my solo project. They did their individual solo project as well. So we all did a project together, and then we all did a project separately. You know, I see. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it was mainly. It's, it's kind of mainly like uh, you know, time is of the essence, man. You know, um, getting things out fast, and when you're creating a comic and stuff like that, it, you know, 
the time flies by so fast and, and you're sitting there developing one issue could take you almost two years if yeah. you're you know if, if you're not just focused on that one thing so getting that first issue out as a team and then going to our individuals and getting first issues out was sort of like a um uh, a, a decision made by all of us to be like hey let's introduce everyone as fast as possible before you know it, you know the time is wasted basically so it's, it's sort of like you know we wanted to just introduce first chapters immediately yeah and also so we can get our ideas out yeah also um while we were working on phase zero uh, Monzo dreams phase zero we were already pretty much working on our first issues already oh yeah so oh, okay so they're already pretty much in production or development yeah in yes. production so once we were done with with uh, until dreams we just went back to the drawing board we yeah, just, we it just started like, finishing up our solos it was like when, when we're at home individually we'll be working on our solo project but then like when we get up together as a group to have like an art session we'll be working on the group project oh yeah and like um and then, like, this year, recently, you know, he finished Electric Tiger, he finished Shadow Wolf, and I did uh, Past. And that one right there is, like, a, a standalone book by itself. But I just did that because, like, I wanted to kind of take a break from my everyday art and try to take out a different genre. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, that, that, that's kind of, like, how that happened. Like, that's why we ended up with so many different issue number ones. And like now we have to follow up. Yeah. Also, yeah. also if I could, if, if, I could uh, if I could throw one more thing, in, also yeah. like um, like uh, that's another thing too. Um, when you're releasing just one story, and you want to have that one story, and and, and you want to just continue so many issues with it, not everybody is gonna like that one story. So we try to produce different stories, and try to bring in different people because not many people are going to like untold dreams or not many people are going to like electric tiger or not many people are going to like solid but if we could bring in different stories like shadow wolf and stuff like that people will have different selections you know mm -hmm. yeah there's that could also bring in different crowd you know yeah, yeah. There's, there's, different strokes for different folks yeah right and there's plenty of times that um some of our conventions where you know people like they're they're they, they pick and choose you know they mm -hmm. All the books so some people come they might see solid and be like oh man like they like they like the fact that it's a female role you know and they're like i, don't, I want that or they'll see electric tiger and they you know they they like the the outfit they like the electricity and all that stuff they'll go for that or they like wolves so they're like oh i like my favorite animal's a wolf let me get shadow you know so it, it's it's kind of a good thing to have you know different variety of, of books yeah oh for sure i mean you gotta expand that brand and you've you've like you said, you kind of did one of two things. You got all this stuff out, so there's something for everybody. But now you're in the pickle of, well, damn, we need to we need to update five damn titles. Holy <laughs> cow, that's yeah. a lot of work. But yeah, we're you know, up for it. that's the fun part. We're yeah. up for it. That's right. <laughs> so um, we got another one. Uh, well, thank you, Baco. I appreciate it. I mean, these are these guys. They do it. I just find them. Uh, they're saying that uh, bringing in some awesome artists to spin with, and I'm like that. I just. Baco. Hey, Joe, right? <laughs> I, I just I just find the people who are good people and are talented. Um, we won't work with people who are talented and assholes, and I won't. Work, and the people that aren't talented, sometimes they get a shot too because you can't say what is good and what is not by one person because I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Baco. I mean, these guys are awesome. So um, polite Juggy came in. Play Juggy, thank you. Welcome to the stream. Um, came in and said, "Do you guys plan to cross over the different series?" So I know that two of them sort of share the same origin story, but do you plan on inter... I mean, you don't have to say if you don't want, because I, I can tell, for J Jerome, you do not play poker. Um, you can <laughs> we can say that you can tell me or not, or just say, maybe. It's up to you. Don't, I don't want you to kind of put everything out there, but Polite Juggy has a, has a good question there. I think I know that guy. He seems very polite. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say ye yes and no. Um, I mean, you know, anything could happen. Anything could happen, especially while we're planning. Um, because planning always goes so deep. 
whenever we're, we're, we're together and, and figuring out which future projects we want to uh, dish out first and stuff like that. And uh, then you got some uh, settings that are like modern day settings that could actually tie in eventually. Yeah. Like, but it's uh, not good. I mean, I no, 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 we're going, like, we're going, man. Something like Untold Dreams, you know, it takes place on a different planet. It wouldn't be able to cross over with, like, Solid. And, like, those wouldn't be able to cross over with, like, Past because, like, that's, like, the end of the world. Yeah. But, like, and Solid's, like, yeah, and the back Solid's, in the like, day. Way back in the day. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, the days of, like, Dracula and stuff. Like, um, but, like, the modern day stuff that we have, like, he has um, Electric Tiger, Shadow Wolf, and I'm working on LeBrunner Fox. Like, it's possible for all three of those to like crossover because it's all modern day. Yeah. yeah. So we like to we like to keep it open. We we keep it oh, open. Yeah. yeah, don't close yourself off when you got that much great content coming out. And yeah. you know, something could potentially spring that you're like, hey, just from talking to this and be like, I wish we would have went this way. Well, there's another series right there because you could potentially have been like, I really wish we could have done this. Mm-hmm. Now you can. And now you don't have to worry about that because there's three of you that can crank out some great content relatively fast, I would assume, as well. If you <laughs> if you put your mind to it and you're, you kind of Try. split stuff up, I bet you you could probably rip through content pretty quick. Yeah. So that's good. So we have more questions. Are you guys still good? I mean, it's almost 11 o'clock. Are you guys all right? We're good. Okay. Excuse me. Back in America, I could do this all night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to work in the morning, so I don't know how much all night I'll do. But I haven't, I haven't been drinking any scotch or whiskey tonight, so I think I can hang a little bit longer. Um, so more questions. Let me see what we got here. Um, any reason to steer away from the term superhumans? Just curious. Super, superhumans. Uh, well, not not necessarily superhuman, but superhero. I would say only because I feel like. Um, didn't DC and Marvel kind of like trademark it? They copied yeah, Rangers and Superheroes. Oh, could, damn, I didn't know that. It, it really felt like it, felt like it, and somebody was actually getting big for, for the indie, indie work, and mm-hmm. they had superhero, like it's labeled superhero. They, if Marvel and DC wanted to sue, they probably can sue. Yeah. Because Good to stay away from that. They, yeah, yeah. That, that's why we have, you know, hypers and cycles. You know, I don't, I don't want to touch anything that I think. Will mess us up and it's way. unique like i mean it is, yeah. Yeah. yeah but super you said superhuman i think he, he probably meant superhero a bit, okay. but the, yeah he probably meant superhero um because H- jose in his book they are like ex superheroes or incommunicado superheroes so he was just wondering why you steered away from that term that's all oh my yeah <laughs> good really good question he meant superhero okay um Bako says he enjoys the term hypers, and so does Boom Bacon. Boom Bacon, what's up, Marcus? How are you? Um, Thank you. They all seem to like that. Um, they like the term paranormals, and they like psychos. So, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's great. So, let me see. I think there was another one. Was there more, another question that I – who drew the art in solid? So, that Elijah, that was you, your story and your art, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So, that's for you, Bako. I, I'm going back up because I'm, I'm bouncing around. Um, let me see. All right, hypers are cool. Everybody likes hypers. I don't. Know. <laughs> so, sounds like my next. Sounds like the next uh, shirt merch that you want. Right. Something right. that just says hypers on it. Hyper psycho. You know, you could pick whichever one you want, or just dickhead human. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I took time on, on on that name too. I like okay. it. And did you? So this is a question for me. Knowing that when I was creating Chimera. Just the term chimera took me forever to come up with. Did you find that terms that you would think, like you could write a story all day long, right? You can write six issues, you can rip through it, but then you'll get stuck on one little thing that you think could be significant. And you're like, what are we going to call them? Like just maybe it could be a female name. It could be the, you know, a type of car that the person drives. Do you find, because I got stuck on, what car this main character was going to drive in my comic. I just, for whatever reason, it stuck with me, and I wanted to be the right car. Do you guys find that you get stuck on little bits where the really hard stuff is easy, but the really easy stuff, you're like, what the hell are we going to call them? Yeah. Yes, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. Sometimes I have to ask them or whoever, like, you know, 
beside me, I'm like, you give me a name for this character because I can't think of anything. Or like, give me just give me like a handful of names and see what I like or, you know. Oh, it took me a while to land on uh, Electric Tiger for uh, the, the title. It took me a while to land on that. I went through uh, Carnivore, uh, The Tiger, White Tiger. We didn't even get to Electric Tiger. Uh, man, I had a... Uh, it used to be called Tiger Fang when I first came up with the character when I was like 12. It was called Tiger Fang. It was more Japanese as, but uh, I, I ended up coming up with Electric Tiger uh, a couple of years ago, and it took me a while to land on that man. Like it, it's just titles, uh, names of, of 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 people, main characters. Like I've been looking up like a bunch of like synonyms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, like. Mm-hmm. Just trying to like Google search to come up with something. Google different. boy names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, before I came up with, with Chimera, originally um, the title was called Incarnate. And I mm-hmm. couldn't use Incarnate because there was an Incarnate, there, there was some IP infringement, not infringement on it. I didn't, I, I didn't infringe anything because I hadn't published it yet, but I had a trademark specialist go and look for it. And Incarnate was actually a book that had nothing to do with my comic. I could have launched it, but he's like, just try to call it something else. And there was nothing by Chimera except for a really cool rock band. I oh, actually, yeah. I actually like both of those names. Those, those are those are cool names. Well, if you ever need a cool name, you can always ping me because I'm not thinking about it too hard. And you can just be like, "Hey, we got this. What do you think?" And I'll I'll toss you a name. Um, we have we have more people coming in the chat, and it has come up that um, uh, he sold her not than me. Um, welcome to the stream. N- new to the stream. It says, Jeff, uh, new to the show, tipping my hat to you. Are you able to go over the titles and these three gents one more time? So just for the people that are new, could you reintroduce yourselves, please? And then kind of say what titles you work on. And then we can, because I know that we're, we're going to Jerome next, I think. Uh, yes. Because we already went with Travis and Elijah. Uh, but Elijah, don't, you don't think I'm going to let you go past on past. Because you really <laughs> didn't cover it too much. So, um, yeah, Jerome, you want to start with you? Oh, uh, yes. My name is Jerome Smith. And uh, I'm his cousin and his brother, and uh, I am co-creator, part creator of Untold Dreams. We all three did this together, and I am sole creator of Electric Tiger. Awesome. Nice. I am Elijah Simon, and these two are my cousins. I'm always with them 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is Solid. This is my first solo book. This is the second solid, the follow up. Mm-hmm. And this is past. This is my latest. Yeah, we're going to come back to that. <laughs> I also uh, did Untold Dreams. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I am Travis Smith. How you doing? <laughs> and uh, this is my cousin, Eli. This is my brother, Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah. All three of us worked on Untold together, and I, you know, it's my solo project, Shadow Wolf. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. We, all of us together is Intense JT. Yes. Great, great. <laughs> yep, they love the weirdo cousins. They're like, they love they love how, like, family-oriented and just, you know, when you when you get people you really like and your family, you grow up together, you just yeah. kind of have that vibe, and I think everybody's going to dig that about you. Not only on stream tonight but when they meet you at shows because i hope they do you know when we do our next stream because you got a kickstarter going up or you got something you want to talk about or you just want to shoot the stuff and you're like jeff can we come on tonight the answer is always yes unless it's like one o'clock in the morning i'll say no i have to work in the morning (laughs) (laughs) but um you know um so yeah i think everybody's kind of doing that the next question that came up jose i'm going to get back to yours um where can we buy the merch so right now, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of your merch is at shows in, in North Carolina, at least the print. You can buy PDFs through SpinWiz Comics. Um, in the next month or so, I'll be working with these guys to get some print-on-demand going. Oh, yeah. um, so you'll be able to buy print-on-demand for stuff if you can't find them at a show. Um, and then in the next six months, we'll, they'll have their own store on SpinWiz Comics where they can put signed stuff and all that other stuff, too. Um, that's something new we're working on. Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so there's plenty of places to do it. Do you have other places besides those that you want to kind of pitch out? Even if it's not mine, that's fine. I don't mind. That you yes. think people can buy your merch? Um, 
Well, right now we're we're in the process of like um trying to like get a whole bunch of different like t-shirts and stuff made, you know, like to be able to sell. Okay. And we're working on um an independent shop to like you know so we can like package it and ship it off ourselves and stuff like that without having to go through like Amazon or you know some third party site. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, a t-shirt website or something like that. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get to the point where we're building up our own independent store from home to where you can, like, buy stuff there. I actually have it up and running right now. It's, it's on my website, um, ElijahSimonArt.com. I have a shop up there. It's, like, right at the top. And um, it has all of the books available. And But I'm going to keep updating it, you know, like, during this summer. Yeah, we uh we we also we have certain books that do run through Amazon, um but it's only the PDFs like you can only get them digitally, except for uh, the first solid and Untold Dreams you can actually buy physical and digital from Amazon. Okay. But uh, we also have um, Shadow Wolf, Electric Tiger. And yeah, we have Shadow Wolf, Electric Tiger, second and uh, the second solid and pass. Second yeah. solid and pass also on Amazon. Uh, mm-hmm. they're digital only. Yeah. Um, okay. But like you said, you know, we're working on a lot of different ways to actually be able to get them out to people who aren't local or who don't want the uh, digital version and want physical. Yeah. And don't worry about Amazon because we got better prices and we're right here. Just click on the link. It's right there. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Bako. Appreciate it. We, uh, Elijah, we, we dropped your, um, your link in, your, in our chat for you so yeah. people can access it. Um, awesome. So Boom Bacon coming up. He says, can I suggest something for future content? A comic book series intended for children six and under. Easy to read, colorful, and promotes learning with, with hyper heroes. I can't find th- anything for my kiddo. Nice. Yeah. Um, I was talking about doing, like, something for kids. Because, like, when we be at conventions, we see kids all the time. Oh, yeah. All, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like, a lot of, a lot of our stuff is mature, you know. Yeah. A, little, a lot of fighting, a little bit of profanity sometimes here and there, you know, and blood and gore and yeah, stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. <laughs> all the good Later, stuff. Bako. But like, uh, Later, Bako. Later, Bako. See you, Bako. Later. But we need stuff for, like, um, the kids, too. So I wouldn't mind, but, you know, I'll have to talk to them. Oh, yeah. The hypers is, is all of them. That's them. Yeah. But that's actually a good idea. We were that's talking great. about, we were, we were definitely talking about, um, like kid, kids, children's books and stuff like that. Too. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Electric Tiger is actually kid friendly. I don't really have person in that at all. To be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's action in the, the blood and stuff like the that. Blood, yeah, I color the blood black if you don't mind, so the kids won't see it. <laughs> 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 There you go, bud. Yeah, uh, boom. Check out uh, Electric Tiger. You might like that. Yeah. But that's 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 um. That's also a question that that's been asked a lot um, mm-hmm. by parents when they come to the conventions. Oh yeah, they ask is it kid kid friendly, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, that's that's something we definitely gonna think about doing. Yeah, oh, yeah, we would love to have a whole line of kid friendly stuff because honestly, there's, I think where independence independent comics is missing the most, is that the reason Marvel and DC started where they did is while some of it was mature, a lot of it was actually for kids. <laughs> And, yeah. and teenagers, and they grew up with it. And what Independence Comics doesn't have a lot of is that that kids to teen. It has a ton of like fifteen year old plus and a ton of mature, but yeah. that all ages is not there. Um, one of the publishers that we have as a partner of ours that does a lot of kid content really well is Arcana. So boom, Arcana is um, if you get a, if you get a chance check out arcana boom because they've got a really good bunch of stuff but look into electric tiger for sure um so yeah check arcana and then check out electric tiger because i think you'll like both those and uh polite juggy said don't worry it's not blood it's spit so you're good. <laughs> black split black split yeah it's a different yeah, it's a different planet you can have whatever color spit you want um so one more question came up is um what ip would you want to cross over with so, so not yours, somebody else's IP. If you could anywhere, anything, who would you like to cross over with? Can I start? Can I yeah, 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 definitely. I would love to have Shadow Wolf, Electric Tiger, and the Burning Fox 
cross over into Street Fighter territory. Or oh, Tekken. Tekken. <laughs> I, I'm surprised you said Street Fighter. Your Tekken, your Tekken people are just like what? Wait, we're, we're we're Street Fighter and King of Fighters. People okay, too. all right, that's all right. So, so just any fighting game. I would love to cross over oh, into yeah. any fighting game, and like you know, that's that's what we love to do. We love to draw fighting, like yeah. So we we we'll fit right in. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, man, ah, oh, man, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Oh, it's yeah. a lot. Uh. Uh, God, man. Crossover, I would say, man, like, th- throw me, if, if, if I could be thrown into, like, anything that would fit right now with what I have out presently, like, now, for Untold, man, crossover with, like, Legend of Korra or Voltron or Ooh. something like that. Uh, Voltron. Uh, I, love that. I was thinking, I was yeah. thinking. Uh, for, for Electric Tiger, man, throw me in a DC comic or Marvel. Like yeah. crossover, like if we can get that going, man. That'd be great. That'd be yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to fight the Human Torch. <laughs> yeah, that's a Tiger versus yeah. Thor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shadow versus uh, Nightwing, Black Panther. <laughs> I like that, it. That would be pretty dope. I and, like it. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of just took everything out of my head. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of good stuff. I would like to see a solid crossover into like Castlevania. That'd be dope. That That would be awesome. Mm Or I wouldn't mind stepping into the Devil May Cry territory. Oh, (laughs) yes, that'll be great. Yeah, I I could I could see solid crossing into that as well as Final Fantasy. Yeah, Yeah, Final Fantasy, man. Yes, yes. seven. Yes, Final exactly. (laughs) Yes, the, the real Final Fantasy. (laughs) <laughs> except, for, except for the original Final Fantasy number one, which I don't think you guys are old enough to have actually known to play, but yeah, I am. Familiar. So, you know, that's that's all it is. Um, Angel is saying Shadow Wolf or Shadow Cat Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride. <laughs> Kitty Pride. Kitty Shadow Pride. Cat. X-Men. Shadow Cat X-Men. Yeah, that would be, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Um, and you also blew his mind by talking about King of Fighters. King oh, of oh, we love Fatal hey. Fury, King of Fighters. Yes. Yes. yes, we love that, man. Like, we went crazy when Capcom vs. S&K came out. Like, oh, yeah. We you know, thought it would never happen. But when Street Fighter went against King of Fighters, that was like, when we were kids, that was like the greatest thing in the world. Oh, yes. Yes. But yeah, King, King of Fighters is, man, it's really underrated. Really underrated. It's, 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 it's underrated. It's one of the greatest 2D fighting games. And it, it's awesome because it's Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting combined. Yep. So you got this good thing and that great thing combined to make, to make King of Fighters. Like, don't get no better than that. Yeah, he said literally read my username. Angel uh, Shiri Nui. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And I, I butchered that, but... Mm-hmm. Angel, Angel, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are a fan of her outfit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, I'll let you know. I'll hook you up. Um, Polite Juggy says, what cons do you guys have coming up? We will be in Augusta, Georgia, yeah. uh, I believe on the 17th of August. Yes. Of August. Pulled it up. Um, and then we're going to be in Greensboro for, God, what is it called? It's the, um, I was trying to find it. Hold up. We're going to be in Greensboro, I think, on the 15th of September. Yeah. I forgot what convention it's called. And then we're going to be in, in September again, we're going to go to New York to Poochie Con. Yes. Yep. Poochie Con. Yeah, we're going to be at Poochie Con. <laughs> then October 26th, that's the Empire Con. That's in, uh, that's in Savannah, Georgia. That's in Georgia, yeah. Okay. And what about, are you going to go to NC Comic Con in Raleigh? We're trying. November, we're trying. isn't it? I thought it was November. It is November. Did I, oh, did I say September? It was in Durham. It was in Durham, right? It's in Durham. Yeah. Oak City's in Raleigh. And then yeah. that's where we met you. And then uh, NC is in Durham. Yeah, yeah, I miss I miss, I miss said yeah it's Durham North Carolina. Yeah 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 we got we're gonna be at that one. Yeah, yeah. we got. I will de- I will definitely be there for sure. Awesome. Nice. So, uh, yes, we can see you again. We'll see you, yeah, see we're you. gonna get some pictures for sure. Go out for a beverage if if you would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we love pictures. Thank you. We love pictures. You say go out for a beverage? Mm-hmm. In adult oh, yeah. in adult beverage if you want. Oh yeah. Right after the con, we yeah. need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you def- <laughs> I mean, yeah, no doubt. Um, Angel's saying SNK is responsible for a ton of fighting game mechanics, but that that's a story for another session. 
And then he's he says that he's in Atlanta. Angel's in Atlanta. Nice. Oh, okay. awesome. Okay, cool. Nice. Cool. Mm-hmm. So you, you definitely got some fans coming. And maybe that's another stream we have is let's talk about gaming. And, oh, hey. Yeah, or we have or we have a co stream and uh you know we we place bets on just how bad Jeff's gonna get his ass whooped <laughs> in any fighting game. Um I used to be good back in the day with pretty decent with Tekken, um, but really good with Mortal Kombat and like really, really good with Street Fighter. And then everything oh. went to combos and stuff like that and it was just all over for me. Yeah. What's your favorite game, Jeff? My favorite game ever or like what I'm playing now? Now, like, of all time. Final Fantasy 1. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Good one. Good That's choice. My, my favorite of all time was Final Fantasy. Um, you know, I was back in 86, 85, 86. You know, there was um, Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, and obviously Mario and all those. But uh, I think Final Fantasy always stuck with me, and it always has. And I've always been a huge fan. Usually when there's Final Fantasy art, I will promote it. Just because, because it's just something I really enjoy. Dragon Warrior was another one uh, that became Dragon Quest. And it was Dragon Quest in Japan. Came over here for Dragon Warrior, and that's kind of along the same lines. Um, and then Halo was another one that I couldn't get. A, I could just could not stop playing. I used to love Call of Duty, and then I think they killed it. Uh, yeah, I agree. That, I agree. Uh, um, <laughs> Warrior of Light, Jeff. Darn right. I'm, to my knowledge, I'm the only one that has completed the original Final Fantasy in under under eight hours with four white mages. What? Yeah, I, I'm nowhere near that. Day. <laughs> I think I'm the only one, to my knowledge, that has done that. But I'm sure there's other people that have. But I could speed. I could speed through that and just man. Anyway, that's a whole. That again is another story. Um, so. Let's talk a little bit more. I mean, I, I think we, Jerome, did you cover yours enough? Do you want a little bit more to talk about your content? Because, oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I don't think you really said. We didn't. We we kind of touched on it a little bit, but we didn't focus on it. I, I want to focus just a little right. bit more on it. All right, this is uh, my solo project, art done and writing done by myself. It's called Electric Tiger. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about a young man named Trevor Crane. This guy here. This is his best friend, October. Uh, it's about a young man named Trevor Crane. He doesn't really care about the problems of the world today. He kind of nonchalant, you know, he kind of shrugged things off his shoulders or whatever. But um, he uh, gets into a situation where he gains uh, superpowers and he has to ask himself what it means to be a hero. Uh, I wanted to take a, a, a young guy in college and who's kind of like popular and doesn't really worry about all that kind of stuff and turn him into a superhero. And I want to, you know, just kind of touch on what that would actually be like from his point of view and i want to do an actual true origin story instead of uh starting them off in the suit with the powers you kind of can you know instead of starting them off in the suit and with the powers and then you i gotta backtrack later just to show how he got it i wanted to just start it off immediately like you're just on the journey with him as he becomes a superhero or sorry hyper <laughs> as he becomes a hyper <laughs> all right i like it I think it's good. And those two, are, that is the same world as Sh is. Uh, yes, this is the same world as uh, Shadow, Shadow Wolf. My brother uh, yep. he does as well. And um, uh, issue two for both of them is actually, uh, we're working on them now. Issue two for this is almost done, man. Like, I'm working so hard on it right now. I only got a few, few pages left, and I'm working on taking things out and adding things in and fixing up a few backgrounds and stuff like that and uh i'll i'll have it out you know on spin list and, and other <laughs> other places i'm here to help you let me know we'll we'll put we'll pump it up and we can remember we can keep it for for purchase only for a little while too okay it awesome. doesn't have to go up just for reading for free we can promote it and put it up there and you know put it up as whatever you want lock it for a little while that way we can try to maximize sales before we start letting people read it awesome man oh, there's enough yeah. all right all right elijah Back up. I know you didn't want to talk about past, but I want to. <laughs> what do you got? Tell me about past. I um, past is my <laughs> it's my mystery project. It's it's that one project that I hardly ever talk about it. I hardly ever promote it. I kind of only bring it to conventions, and it, it does really well at the cons and stuff like that. 
Um, it's an idea that I had about four years ago, but personally, I didn't think that, I don't think I had the like the art skills to bring it to light. Like I, I was drawing it four years ago, and I just I didn't like it at all. But um, here we are today, and like I didn't even tell these two guys that I was working on it. Like I just came to the table one day and said, "Here, this is what I have." I remember four years ago though. Four years ago, we was actually working together four years ago. Oh really? He was like past. I'm like, huh? He's like past. I'm like, what? And he's like post apocalyptic storytelling. I was like, okay. Ooh, that's and what I'm talking like, about. Four years later, he come on over with it. I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, like, I remember that. Yeah. Like we, we were working together. Like we had a. Um, we were, no yeah. We, we was at, at our job. Like we were working. Yeah. And, and we used to get in trouble because <laughs> <laughs> at that time we were. Working on Untold, like, I don't think we, did we start no, no, we, didn't start Untold Dreams. we were talking about Untold Dreams at the job also, and shortly, shortly after we made it happen. Yeah. So, I like but, it. Like, um, it's pretty much just, it, it follows a kid named Isaiah, and, um, he pretty much is just, he's dropped dead center into the middle of the apocalypse. Like, I didn't want it to, like, oh, this apocalypse story that just picks up at the beginning and you know everything starts happening and blah 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 like that i just wanted to kind of drop him dead in the middle so it's like yeah he's he just going he's just he's, he's arguing with people over loot and like uh it, it's just crazy it's, i don't really no hey that's what it's all about you get to do all that cool stuff that's why we write comics you know i think that a lot of what the reason I write is because, and maybe you guys are the same, maybe not, but when I started writing, it was because there wasn't anything like, I wanted to read something and I couldn't find it, so I wrote it. Exactly. And are you guys right. doing the same, the same thing? Yes. Yeah, we, we do the same thing. It was like, we want to try to like create more like uh, like heroes of color. Cause like, there was like a lack of like, a, a lack of like black characters or black heroes or it's like strong black figures that you can follow. So we trying to like create that and bring that to the indie world, you know, yeah. for mm-hmm. the kids to have something that they can look up to. Or like females, they they love solid, and you know they want to see a strong female lead. You know, we we try to bring that to the table. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And I think and that's awesome. It kind of goes back into uh, I forgot who asked the question, but when he um asked why did we do a bunch of first issues instead mm-hmm. of yeah like uh going back yeah when you when you said you know you read comics and stuff like that and it's, it's things that you want to see so you do it yourself mm-hmm. it's kind of like um that compromise stuff as a group like we did we did we throw an untold together and we compromise and we do that together but also the things that we want to do you know ourselves we mm-hmm. go and do it ourselves with, with our solo project so we we I don't I guess y'all the same way we every day we just think about stuff and yeah. just like oh man I gotta I gotta draw that or I gotta I gotta write that down so I won't forget. Oh yeah, you know? there, there's projects right now that all three of us have planned that you know I don't know when or you know when we're gonna get to it, but we have so many projects planned and and we hope everybody you know are gonna enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we're already talking like yeah, so in twenty twenty we're gonna do this. Yeah. And, and when we get to twenty twenty one we're gonna, you know, like we, we have another conversation. I oh, love yeah. it. Entrepreneurship to the max. Try, yeah. dear, try. And you know, you you bring up a good point and I, I know you're talking about the the African American heroes. I think what I would like to do in the future is have a big podcast or you know, um, maybe a live stream where we set up a time maybe we're all at a convention together or something like that. And we talk about how the differences in growing up not white, because obviously I don't know what it's like to grow up as someone of color. Um, And I think a lot of people out there don't realize that that can alter the way you write, the way you draw, the way you read. And I think it's a fan would be fantastic just to talk about not only what are you trying to do within your comics, but what are you, when you read them back or somebody reads them, what they see subconsciously coming through? 
Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's a great topic. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. that's awesome. It's I don't think it's anything anybody's ever done. I think right now a lot of people are scared in society to talk about anything oh. color, um, mm-hmm. whether it be or race or religion, because they're like, oh, somebody's gonna f- get offended. And I think a way to go about that is be like, color's not going anywhere. And yeah. and you know we're all gonna merge into one super race anyway, so it doesn't you know, <laughs> you know it doesn't matter. And there are people that will dislike that. And I think the way you stand up to a lot of the morons out there that see somebody of color, race, or creed different than their own and think that they are superior to anybody else need to be locked down and shown that to their kids and people that do want to listen that can be changed from the way they're thinking that everybody is the same. But the way that we have grown up brings rich color fruitful writing reading and art where you wouldn't otherwise receive it and i think that is a blessing from again i have been a white guy my whole life so i can't say the good and the bad of it but i do see that there is some writing that comes out of certain pieces that if the person may not have been a person of color we never would have gotten that type of writing yeah and I think that is a fantastic thing. Um, Tuskegee, Tus- Tuskegee Airs comics, I believe, plays okay. off that a bit. So I met the guys from Tuskegee Airs. Um, they've been, they were actually at the same con we were at together. They were at Oak City. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually just saw them at Heroes Con um, about two months ago. Um, they got their own thing going, which is fine. And actually, his wife actually makes a children's book, which is fantastic. My son has it upstairs. I got issue one into. But to have a bunch of people from a bunch of different backgrounds and have somebody like me just shut up and just let everybody talk and kind of come to I might moderate it to, to try to put certain things away because I, I like to pride myself on never seeing color, race, or religion. I just see people. Um, I'm going to say it. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to get involved and perceive or have anybody perceive that I know what it's like to live a life of color. Um, so if that makes any sense. It does. You know what I mean? But I think that would be an aw- that would be an awesome stream on its own right. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. get everybody talking about it. And I'm sure you'd find these assholes after the fact of the, like this, that, and everything. So we can target them and block them forever. Um, but... Um, Anyway, I, I would love to do that sometime. I think that's fantastic. If you guys are down for it, just put it oh, in yeah. your book somewhere. And I think it'd be just awesome to put that level of penetration into something where everything is seen as politically correct and just flip it and be like, we're all together. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be fantastic. Anyway, that, that's, that's, I'll get off my soapbox now. Um, so it's, it's almost 1130. We've been talking for almost an hour. And I, I can keep going. I told you, I, for some <laughs> odd reason, people do not mind talking to me. But yeah. I want to get into something that's just a, the Jeff and the Restless. Huh, that's pretty funny. Um, and uh, Jose said he would he would do it. He he said good idea. He didn't say he'd do it, but I bet you I could talk him into it. Come on, um, Jose. Come on, Jose. Come on, Jose. Come on. We need you. join us. Come on, we yeah, need right. you. Um, uh, one thing. So we've talked a lot about comics. We've talked a lot about where you, where you've co- how you've put them all together. A little bit about you guys. I think part of what people forget is that just like being a teacher, I, I say it's being like a teacher, but it's different, is when you're a teacher or you're a kid in school and you see your teacher, they're your teacher. But when you see them outside of school, they're like, oh, you have a life? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wait, you're not supposed to be outside of school. Um, yeah. Because you don't, you don't have like kids. You don't, that's all weird, right? Because you're just a teacher. Um, yeah. uh, Jose said he's in. I said, let him know. Nice. I'll introduce you guys anyway because I think you'll love Jose. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies are killing me. Um, North Carolina allergies are no joke. Oh, it's, man. It's, it is nasty down here. Up, up in New York, and I'm from Syracuse originally, never had allergies. Moved down here, allergies. Yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was worse this year. Never. Oh, it's been awful. Oh, my God. Anyway, not to, that's a whole nother topic as well. Um, Stuff that you guys like to do that is not comics and gaming. I mean, obviously, we kind of all like that. The people that are coming to this show in general um, are pretty nerdy, normally. 
uh, every once in a while you might be, get one of your your for your friends that isn't nerdy but likes you and they're like wow this is really nerdy um but i know that one of you is a epic break dancer uh two of us both of us yeah both you, of you do yeah um, okay so how not to change the subject too much but i've seen your videos and i'm like i used to be able to do that when i was young and wouldn't break my hip <laughs> <laughs> or my leg b-boys yeah so where did you like when did you start doing this has it always been a thing that you just like dancing or is it competitive is it oh uh, well my uh our mother me and my brother travis here uh our mother had us watching a lot of hip-hop uh movies and stuff growing up and she introduced us to a movie called breaking and b street and uh they're heavily influenced by the hip-hop culture and those movies they had a lot of break dancing graffiti and and, and uh, djing mc and uh we saw that when we were really young we were kids and we always wanted to learn uh fast forward so i'm about like uh 16 17 i'm in high school and uh, i meet these group of guys and they actually knew how to break dance and i thought it was the most amazing thing i have ever seen because i thought it was like no one ever does this anymore like it's done it's over that happened back in like the freaking 70s or 80s or something like that mm -hmm. but uh uh, I ended up, I waited one year purposely so my brother can get to high school with me and we ended up learning how to, we, uh, uh Hold I, on. I see somebody junior, saying, junior, junior, yeah, someone's saying name and B-boys right now. Yeah, Gravity, Hong Ton, et cetera. You know, yeah. breaking, breaking turbo wit, uh, wild style. Y'all speak my language. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We are uh, Renegades, B-boy Luigi, Kid David. Oh yeah, yeah. This all is all, guys, yeah. man. Um, if, if you follow us on our Instagrams, actually, uh, we, we have, videos up we don't get to post them as much because we're doing uh art all the time mm -hmm. but uh we definitely break competitively uh we we used to do it heavily when we were younger uh now because we're doing art and stuff like that we don't get to enter competitions as much but uh we we stay practicing every day is good exercise try to keep ourselves young you know yeah. what i mean mm -hmm. and also his little brother is with us too now and he, he's breaking too he does really with us. yeah, yeah. His, his little brother. He dances with us as well. Um, I also like skating on the side. I, I, I learned how to skate when I was like 13 from a, a good friend of mine named Derek. And uh, uh, after that, picked up longboarding. I like to do that a lot. And really like to go cruising and skating. It's pretty fun. That's awesome. And Elijah, you're just sitting there smiling. Oh, I'm, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> do you do anything else on the side? Yeah, I do. Uh, I love music. I, I do a lot of music on the side. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I uh, started studying like music producing, and just like um, pretty much, I just love to make sounds. Like uh, if I do like a video of like solid or something like that, I'll make the music that's being played in the background. Like I've been doing that for like over ten years. Alan, you better lock these guys up before you can't <laughs> afford them anymore. <laughs> it just like just small stuff like uh, video editing and just all types. I'll just love diving into like anything I can like just. That's you know, amazing. Creativity. Yeah. That that's amazing. Well, it's great to see that there's there's well rounded beyond that. I think a lot of people have the misconception that people who are artists are introverts. Um, no. and, <laughs> and some of them most definitely are. Let's not let I mean, let's be fair. You know, when you go to a con and I think the biggest problem and I tweeted about I posted about it on Instagram is the biggest thing when I was walking around, I think I tweeted, look up. Because a lot of these guys are not selling you know people might come up and try to look at their stuff or whatever and i'm like yeah. you would sell so much more if you made eye contact we yes. were actually we it, it's crazy a lot of things that we're talking about we actually <laughs> talked about probably like yeah. yesterday or a couple of weeks ago we were just talking about how a lot of people at these cons at their tables they do not look up and they no. just they sit yeah. down and draw like i try so hard not to draw when i'm at a con because you're there to you know uh conversate with people bring them in mm -hmm. um get them to potentially be fans of your 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 work that you're producing and so I, we try our, our hardest not to um draw and keep our heads down the entire yeah, yeah. time while we're at the table yeah there's a lot of times where I'll, I'll be like um uh we'll have our sketch pads with us and i'll be like oh yeah once i brought my computer I'm like, yeah, I'm about to work on the second issue while we're at the con. I never turned it off. Like, when we're, <laughs> when we're there, it's like, we don't want to, I can't, we have our sketch pads to draw on stuff like that. 
we don't draw, we don't we don't do none of that. We just yeah. we're just in the. In and I the think booth. one of the advantages that like that we have is like we have each other. Like so, we have like we bounce off each other energy, okay. and like when we talking to people, we see people all the time. Like, we're constantly looking at people and making contact. And if I don't see him, Jerome will see him. If, Jerome don't see him. Travis will see him. It's yeah. like you know, it's just. It's good to have people with you too. And you meet when they're by themselves, they're just kind of like in their own little zone, and people coming up to them. Yep. And they miss out on the best conversations, man. Yeah. You, like you yeah. meet the most loving people at these at conventions. These conventions. It's, it's, exactly. it's awesome. It's amazing. You meet yeah. uh, so many talented people, people like yourself. Like you yeah. know, you ended up finding those stuff like that. And you know, had we had our head downs and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been. You probably would just said he's out of assholes. And stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, wouldn't want to talk to me, I guess is probably more like it. But, you know, I think a lot of those guys are working on commissions, and I get that. But I'm like, why wouldn't you just take the card, take, you know, find a way to charge them, start it, and say, hey, listen, this is it. If you don't have it within seven, you know, seven days, it reverses or whatever. Like, there's there's a different way to do it where they should. Now, I mean, sell your art for sure, but commissions, you're just head down. You could probably sell three times the amount if you're heads up. Yep. And I'll tell this this story to the guy to everybody that's watching um and so when i was at oak city i was walking around doing talent scouting and that's just what i do because i'm trying to promote my platform and get more great uh, content creators on it that's my whole goal is to will expand as we as our library expands but i only pick people that i actually enjoy talking to um or if i on instagram if i like their work you know, I'll reach out or something like that. Now, these three guys, I was walking around, a whole bunch of people are either A, super introverted and don't understand how marketing works and don't want to talk to you. And I'm like, you're just, you blow, you're, we're done. Like, if I can actually tell within the thir- first 30 seconds whether or not I want somebody to be on the platform by the way that they respond to me when I go to talk to them. Yeah. Um, now, sometimes you got to get them just talking because they're, they are shy. And you can get them out of, when they start talking about their own content. You, you see them come to life. But it's how they respond to me coming up to them is usually how I already know how things are going to work out. But for everybody listening, so these three guys were on the end cap. I'm, I'm sorry. it was They didn't have end caps at, at Oak City. But they were on the last, the very first spot on one of the rows. And, I can't, and they were actually next to a pole, if I'm not mistaken. There was a pole on... <laughs> You're right, <laughs> Jamal, right? On, on your right-hand side, didn't you have a pull on there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I came by, and the first thing they did, all three of them at the same time, not not perfectly. I mean, it wasn't like a creepy unison thing, like, you know, <laughs> something you're like, damn, did you re- rehearse that? But they were, they were looking around, and I came up, and all I did, they smiled first. And they said, hi, how are you? I instantly knew that even if they're they didn't have content because i didn't at that point i didn't know that they had their own content all i did is i saw them and i saw the the branding and i think the first words out of my mouth were hey how are you guys doing what do you do like i just wanted to know about the content because i they had within an instant already showed me that they have conscious enough to be polite to the people that may be purchasing their content Regardless of whether they purchased it or not, it wasn't about that. It was about making a, a conscious effort to be polite, to smile, and to at least introduce themselves to their brand. And when I found out that the content was good, I was like, damn. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> I don't think our conversation lasted for more than what, maybe five, six minutes? Because I, I remember specifically saying, I want to get out of, way, out of your way so you can sell your stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch, right? Didn't I? Uh, that's kind of the way it went, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you definitely left an impression because we uh we stayed talking about that moment like yeah, yeah. for I think weeks actually like we stayed talking about that moment because we were so interested in actually like uh, uh you know connecting with you and, and and actually like collabing and having someone to network with, man. Like yeah. yeah. Mhm. And the first network thing beyond me will be with Alan and Jose. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's going to work out. I'm telling you. Um, let me see. Um, Alan says, sweet interview, sweet books. We'll most likely, most definitely be in touch. Obviously, Jose was impressed. Um, and then Angel says, that's that's super important, first impressions. 
Uh, nothing but great wishes to them and their futures. And then Jose says he loves these cats. Thank you, uh, thank you, guys. So, uh, you know, uh, Alan had to leave. He said, uh, got to drop for a bit. This has been super informative. These three guys have a shitload of talent. See broad horizons in their futures. So, see, I, I wasn't just talking you up. I'm just scary good at knowing who is going to be really good. I guess from maybe a business sense, and you're very all entrepreneurial. I think that while comics are going to be a piece of what you have, I think you're going to find other things that are going to be even better, which isn't a bad thing. You know, build the brand, enjoy what you do. That way, even if you decide to stop doing it, you're like, I had a great time when I was doing it, and it was awesome. And you can always you can show it to your grandkids someday. Well, yeah. I mean, at least the one with the black spit. Wait till they're older, <laughs> and you can show them the other stuff. But um, it is 11, almost 1140. Do you guys want to say anything else? I mean, we've just been chatting away, which is great. I love talking to you guys. Um, yes, uh, if you could, if you guys want to, if you're interested, uh, follow me on Instagram at bboymayhem underscore art. Uh, substitute the E with the three in mayhem. Uh, that's where I mainly operate from. Um, I'm, of course, you know, we're going to be building different websites and stuff like that for you. Mm-hmm. That, that's where I mainly operate from. Uh, you can catch uh, my uh, me talking about my future projects. Um, stuff that I'm doing now and where to find things that we have out now and what's to come. Yeah. Okay. Do me a favor. I'll do this because, um, putting that in here is going to be tough. Okay. Hit me up on Instagram and just drop all of your Instagram tags in there. Awesome. When I, when I highlight this video of you, I will just, I will promote it and I'll tag all three of you so that all way right. everybody can get to you. And that way you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah. Two birds, one stone, that whole thing. Oh, yes, Angel already did it. Never mind. He already dropped it in. Nice. Oh, awesome. There you go. Damn, Angel on top saw, of it. Uh, Angel, I think I saw, it, uh, they said something about uh, they, October was a cool name. Yeah. Uh, I had saw that uh, briefly. I had looked up and saw that. But yep. uh, <laughs> October, I actually got that name from, uh, I freaking love that movie Stay Alive, the horror movie from back in the day. And uh, I watched that movie, and uh, the character played by Sophia Bush was called uh, October. So I ended up, you know, get an influence from that that name. Uh, Because we take influence from everything, from movies, music, anime, cartoons, video games, uh, you name it. I love it. Um, There was one more question. I missed it by Angel. I apologize, Angel. Dragon Con's coming up in Atlanta. Y'all attending or cosplaying? If so, as who? No, we're not gonna be at that one. Yeah, right. Man, I, we, we definitely I wish I could. There. Yeah, I wish I could, but the, I will be there next year. We heard next about year. um, it's one in Savannah, Georgia. That's the only one that we heard about. Um, yeah. As far as like this year, the end of this year. Dragon Con for us, we are hoping. And Angel, you might enjoy this. Um. Uh. I my hope next year is. I'll, I'll go over this briefly. I'm opening up a 501c3, which is a not-for-profit, which is basically called Comics vs. Cancer. And I'm going to be traveling to children's hospitals, asking them to tell me their stories, and then finding artists to, to put them into art, and then selling them, and then the money goes to that hospital. Yeah, that's the case. So that's just something that I feel like my son is not sick. I'm very blessed. So instead of an origin story starting out with something bad, my origin yeah. is starting out with something good. It's just, just a little different. And it's something good that I think everybody, hopefully everybody wants to get behind and just be part of. Yeah. The second part of that is we want to do live streaming for um, something that we do. All of our bits and subscriptions and um, donations go to something called Meg Smile. And what that does is it basically kids that are fighting cancer or ja- just jacked up stuff in their life, we get them things they need, whether it be for school, whether it be for, and I say we, I'm not really, it's not we, it's they. They get things for kids in school. Um, they just recently got a, um, almost like a crane hook for a child that couldn't really move until he was in water. So they have it so they can actually pick him up in his wheelchair and put him in water so he can swim. Like, it's just like cool stuff like that. One kid needed an iPad so he could do homework. Another kid couldn't leave his room because of he was sick, so they got him a computer because he loved doing PC gaming. Oh, Stuff nice. like that. So I donate everything that comes from this stream. So, um, all the profits go to that charity. And that's in North Carolina. Um, that's, that's a great thing. What, uh, what part of North Carolina? 
Um, they're all over North Carolina, but they actually they live right down the street from us in Holly Springs. Oh, okay. 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 So they're super close to us. You know, Durham, Raleigh. They're, they're big in the dirt. Well, I say big. They're small, but they're better known in Durham, Raleigh, um, Chapel Hill. You know, the triangle, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, part of what we're going to be doing is my hope is that at Dragon Con specifically, because I actually know some people that um, – I know people who – Un, who know the people who run it to get people going where we're actually going to live stream tabletop gaming and do it'll be this stream tabletop gaming with basically like celebrities and stuff and all those donations will go to meg smile so okay. next year dragon con angel i'm going to meet you in person and if you guys are there obviously i want to try to include as many people that are partners as well as well so uh Give me another year, and we'll see what we can do about that, too. All right. Awesome, man. Sounds, Sounds great, man. Sounds yeah. great. So, um, all right. I, I just keep chatting away as if uh, we've got all the time in the world, and work still comes at 7 a.m. Um, Magic <laughs> Gathering featuring Scarlett Johansson, and for sure, Jeff. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we take off? Um, I just want to thank you for uh... – Oh, no, that's not oh, that's you even. Not... Oh, I, thought, I thought you had background music. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a tearjerker. <laughs> Hashtag the feels. No, I just, uh, I just want to appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate this, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. We yeah. really appreciate this. Yeah, oh, this counts as, you know, I don't, I don't know about Elijah. I'm not sure. No, this but, is literally our first. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, song, this counts as our interview. Yes. Oh, so really? We're nervous, man. I'm nervous. I'm nervous right now. You guys did, <laughs> no way. You guys did awesome. Hey, I, I hope so. Man. You made you made it easier for us. Oh man. yeah, you did, man. Well, I mean, when you got three good-looking guys on the other side, then you got me. Everybody feels better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're all good. Um, we do have one more question coming out, and before I give you that question, you're more than welcome. Like I said before, you guys are super talented. I think that you're only at the edge of where you, I think you're going to be, whether it be in comics, video, music, or whatever. Um, I think this is a stepping stone for you. I think you're going to be pulling out even more content. I think you're going to learn even more things to do. And I honestly think your entrepreneurial spirit is only going to benefit you tenfold in the near future. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep being who you are. The rest will fall into place. Um, so much. And I'll be there with you the whole time, as long as you let me. Hey, That's man. It. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. man. Hey. So one more question. Um Oh, Jose says next interview. Jose's Crisis Corner on YouTube. Oh, wait, what happened? Well, I gotta, we gotta connect. I want. I want. Jose to said his oh, next, Crisis the next Corner. interview you can have is Jose's Crisis Corner on YouTube. Oh, oh awesome! Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. I'll hook you up. Don't worry, I'll introduce y'all. Um, yeah. Angel has one more question. He says, "Which of your characters would you guys put in Southtown?" I don't know what Southtown South is. Southtown, oh, uh, Fatal Fury. Fatal Fury. Oh, see, you'd only know that if you played that. Wait, what's I'm wrong? That is Fatal Fury. That's, that's, that's Fatal Fury. Yeah, yeah, Southtown. Yeah. Um, Wesley. Yeah, I'm gonna throw in Trevor from Electric Tiger, man. Yeah. Like, I, I really feel like, uh, because a lot of, like we said, a lot of things influence us and stuff like that. Apart from him being the actual superhero and stuff like that, him outside of the costume yeah. and being able to fight and stuff like that, I feel like uh, he would actually fit in. Yeah, that's what. You know, I feel like I didn't even show the costume. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna show it. Don't do this, it. I, this is him in his uh, actual costume once he suits up. Yeah, that's enough. And you'll be able Damn. to you'll be able to see that in uh, issue two once it's actually done, which will be out really soon. But yeah, Southtown, him fitting into Southtown, I think that'll yeah. really be dope. Fight yeah. Wolfgang Krauser or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wesley for me. Wesley. Oh, uh, Fatal Fury. Yeah, I love yeah. Fatal Fury. And Wesley yeah. for you. Yeah. I'll choose my thirty. The Burner Fox, just due to like the modern day setting. I would love to bring him, like, oh, yeah, sure. I wish I had it. Oh, yeah, I think. Okay. Well, yeah, he's up there. Yeah. Definitely fit in, I feel like, in uh, <laughs> the Fatal Fury world, man. Which is funny enough, because uh, my character, Electric Tiger, he doesn't move. Um, well, when I had him as Tiger Fang when I was younger, the move Tiger Fist that he has was actually based off of uh, Burning Knuckles right. yeah. from Terry Bogart, Fatal Fury. So, oh, uh, yeah. 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 Was that the big dude with all the muscles? Uh, Terry long, Bogart, long the, the guy with the red hat. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a day <laughs> since I played some Fatal Fury. 
He says, yes, sir, uh, Krauser. Oh, yeah, Wolfgang Krauser. Wolfgang Krauser, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's his problem, man. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, guys, I, I think that is it. Um, you are welcome anytime. Like I said, you guys want to chat and hang out. You want to promote one of your new books coming out. You yeah. want to do something for whatever. Or you just want to shoot and be like, hey, we got 30 minutes. You want to jump on and just talk? Because every Wednesday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. and going to whatever, especially if I don't have somebody, you're mm-hmm. always welcome. Nice, That's awesome, man. man. Great to hear. Appreciate it. Terry's dad is named Jeff, by the way. Jeff's a damn good name. I'm telling you. <laughs> So, um, everybody hang with me real quick. I want to say goodbye to these guys real quick. I don't know if I'm going to sign off or I'm going to try to run a couple team fight tactics rounds. I feel the need to, to kick some tactic butt, but I'm also <laughs> exhausted. So I don't know. And I have to work in the morning. So, um, oh, oh boy, I just broke something. Um, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is there a way for us to get a hold of this interview so we can share it? Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, tomorrow or Friday, I will cut. I'm gonna do the highlight. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna cut a highlight for us, and then okay. drop that in. And then you'll be able to take that that clip link and share it to whomever. And uh, in All the right. next awesome. in the next month, we're trying to build out um, kind of like an intro for okay. Spinwiz Comics, like for this show, for the Spinwiz Comics show. I have an audio <laughs> intro. I just don't have video behind it yet. And then um, I will take all these. I'm gonna load all of them to YouTube. Okay. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. So if you want to wait just a little while, you'll you'll have the YouTube link. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. But this this will be out in the next couple days. I'll I'll edit it and highlight it and all that other fun stuff. All right. Awesome. awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. So guys, thank you again. Thanks for your time. Thanks for hanging until Jose was done. That dude can talk. I don't know if he's still. Are you Jose? You still? Hey, we enjoyed um, this. Class. Yeah. We. Yeah. Oh no, no. Sorry. He said Jose. Uh, he's no, I, just, I, I was talking a little garbage. I was just. I was just throwing a throwing a fastball across the bow, um, but yeah, stay in touch. Whatever you need, at the very latest, let's meet up at NC Comic Con. At the very earliest, whenever you want. All right, oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Have a great one, guys.